Hello and thank you for watching this video on how to use Amazon Simple Q service with a .NET framework. I'm Taz Hussain, a Solutions Architect here at Amazon Web Services. Amazon Simple Q service, also known as SQS, is a fully managed message queuing service that enables you to decouple and scale microservices, distributed systems, and serverless applications. SQS works on the principle that applications, known as producers, send messages to SQS queues hosted on AWS. These messages are then persisted on queues and processed by applications known as consumers, which may carry out logic such as loading messages onto a database or an ERP. SQS has some great features to aid developers, such as first-in, first-out message delivery, at least once message processing, encryption of messages in transit and at rest, redundant infrastructure providing highly concurrent access to messages, and matching of message transmission and deletion. Getting started with and using SQS is easy, as all you will need is an AWS account with no complex networking setup or long-term contracts needed. It is a highly available, reliable, scalable, and fault-tolerant service, as your queues are distributed across multiple servers and availability zones. You pay per use, whether you call it 10 times, 100 times, or 100,000 times, you never have to worry about the backend architecture as the service scales elastically, providing nearly unlimited throughput. Also, AWS does the undifferentiated heavy lifting for you, meaning we provision and manage the infrastructure, allowing the user to focus on your workloads. In modern cloud architecture, applications are decoupled into smaller independent building blocks that are easier to develop, deploy, and maintain. Amazon SQS provides communication and coordination for these distributed applications. SQS can also significantly simplify coding of decoupled applications while improving performance, reliability, and scalability. This is because SQS queues allow us to communicate asynchronously, which means that the endpoints that are producing and consuming messages interact with the queue and not each other. This means components within the ecosystem don't need to wait for another, resulting in optimized data flow. SQS can also make your data persistent for a time and reduce errors that occur when different parts of the system go offline. By separating different components with message queues, you also create fault tolerance. If one part of the system is ever unreachable, the other can continue to interact with the queue. The queue itself can also be mirrored for even more availability. Also, SQS makes it possible to scale precisely where you need to. When workloads peak, multiple instances of your application can all add requests to the queue without risk of collision. With that in mind, this video will demonstrate how easy it is to create an application which uses SQS by creating a queue, sending it messages, and processing messages once they are received by the queue. Let's switch over to Visual Studio and walk through the code. So let's get started. This is a simple project I have created to show how easy it is to get started with Amazon SQS. I have the AWS toolkit installed in my Visual Studio environment. This isn't required, but it will make your life a whole lot easier as you start to interact with AWS services in the future. You can download this from the Visual Studio extensions library or directly from AWS. Additionally, I have created an AWS profile that's linked to my AWS account and my permission set. This will allow my code to access resources deployed within my AWS environment. Let's have a look at the NuGet packages used in my solution. The great thing about AWS is that all the resources and services are managed through APIs. And the great thing about being a .NET developer using AWS is that AWS creates NuGet packages for all the different services and resources available, making it very easy to consume them. You can see in this solution, we are using the following NuGet packages. AWS SDK.SQS for interacting with the SQS APIs. Newtonsoft.json for serializing and deserializing objects being transmitted and received by our queue. 
Now let's talk through the flow of code and how this application works. The code displayed is a console application written in C Sharp using the .NET Core framework. It creates an SQS messaging queue, sends messages to it, reads items from the queue and outputs it to the console window. This application has two classes. The program.cs class, which executes the logic for this demo, and a demo message model class, which is a custom object I have created that will be serialized and sent to SQS as a message. You can replace the demo message model.cs class in your project with an object model of your choice. Cool. Let's go back to the program.cs class and walk through the code. Within the program.cs class, the main method orchestrates the flow of this application with the following steps. First, it creates a list of messages to send to our queue. For the purposes of this demo, this was done by invoking the create messages method. The create messages method simply loops 100 times, populates a list of 100 demo message models, assigning each demo message model an ID based on the loop counter. Once the loop is finished, this list is returned and the value is used in our main method. Once the messages to transmit are created, we then need to create an SQS queue in the AWS AP Southeast 2 region, also known as Sydney. To do this, we first create a new instance of the Amazon SQS client, passing in the region endpoint value of AP Southeast 2. Then we invoke the create queue method, passing in three parameters, the SQS client object we just created, a name for our queue, and a visibility timeout setting of 10 seconds. The create queue method then uses these parameters to create a new queue in our AWS account inside of the Sydney region. This is done by invoking AWS APIs via the AWS SDK.SQS NuKit package we had installed in this project. Let's explore this method further, starting with the parameters passed in. The SQS client helps interactions with AWS services by containing key configuration information such as the region we wish to interact with, our AWS credentials, permissions, and much more. The purpose of the queue name is pretty straightforward. This is what our new queue will be called once created. The visibility timeout is a period of time measured in seconds, during which Amazon SQS prevents other consuming components from receiving and processing a message. This is to help multiple consumers not process the same message twice by mistake. In this example, our timeout is for 10 seconds. If unspecified, the default visibility timeout for SQS is 30 seconds. These parameters are used to create an SQS queue in the Sydney AWS region. If successful, we will be returned a create queue response object containing a queue URL. This URL points to our new messaging queue and can be used to send messages and read messages from our new queue. If the create queue method is successful, we will be returned a queue URL. This URL will be used by our application when sending and receiving messages from SQS. Let's move on to sending messages to SQS. In the next step in our code, we iterate through the messages list, serialize messages to JSON, and then transmit them to SQS by invoking the send message method. The send message method creates a send message request, assigns a queue URL and message body. In this case, our serialized demo message model is the message body. It then uses the SQS client to send messages to our demo SQS queue we had just created in Sydney. This call returns a send message response, which should hopefully contain a HTTP OK response from SQS. Once our messages are sent, we will invoke the receive messages method to read items from our queue and display them in our console window. As we have done previously in our application, we will need to supply this method with a queue URL pointing to our specific queue and an SQS client which will be used to invoke actions against our queue.
There are multiple ways to read from a queue. In this example, I have used a simplified method for learning purposes. We first create a receive message request and then find the approximate number of messages in the queue. This is done by inspecting the attributes of our SQS to find the value of the approximate number of messages attribute, as demonstrated in this function. Once the approximate number of messages in our queue is returned, our application will loop through SQS, read messages one by one, and write them to the console screen. OK, let's do a quick summary and then run the application. So far, we've covered off a couple of things. First, we create a list of messages to send to SQS. Then we create a new queue. Once the queue is created, we loop through the messages and transmit each message to our SQS queue created in Sydney. Those messages are then read by the receive message method and the outputs are printed to the console window. Let's run this application now and see what happens step by step. Let's run the application and follow the console outputs to see what's happening with our SQS and our application code. As we run the code, we can see that our application creates a queue and we get a queue URL back from our API call via the AWS SDK. Next, our application sends our demo data set to the queue one by one and we receive a HTTP response code for each transmission. Once transmission is complete, we will start reading the messages from our queue one by one and output them to the console screen. As each message from the queue is read, they will disappear for 10 seconds from the SQS queue so other consumers cannot process the same message. You may notice that the order of messages received back may not be in the same order we transmitted them in. This is because we didn't specify that the queue we had created for this demo needs to enforce first in, first out. In some scenarios, message ordering needs to be respected, so keep FIFO in mind when using SQS in your use cases. You can find further information about this on the AWS developer documentation for Amazon Simple Queue services. Now let's go and have a look at our AWS web console and see what the queues look like. When logging into the AWS Management Console, you'll be presented with a standard landing page. In the search bar, you can type in SQS to go to the Amazon Simple Queue Service dashboard. This dashboard should show us all of the SQS queues available to us, and as you can see, our demo queue is present. There are 100 messages within the queue, as our code did not delete anything, and so the message count has not reduced. Cool. So as you can see, we've run our code, the console application has created a new queue and populated it with 100 messages. These messages were read but not deleted, and so after the application has finished running, the message visibility timeout has expired after 10 seconds and the messages are now available for further processing if required. In some instances, you may need to think about how to delete or expire messages within your queue so think about what kind of business logic you need to implement in your application to ensure that messages are either only processed once or are available for multiple consumers to process as part of a business workflow. So let's recap. In today's example, we showed you how to create a queue, send messages to it, and then read messages from the same queue once transmission is complete. This was done using Visual Studio, C Sharp, and the .NET Core framework. We also used the AWS SQS SDK, which allowed us to quickly and easily work with AWS APIs to carry out the aforementioned steps. As you can see, using SQS with C Sharp is very easy, and AWS has several NuGet packages to assist with using AWS services in your .NET project. I hope you enjoyed this video, and thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, please reach out to the AWS team via the aws.com website.